we thank you for tuning in today. We have a very good program for you. And if you have time, call a friend, tell them to turn the TV on or DVR it for you. Today we're talking about the universe, the planets, the atmosphere, the heavens. We have a lot of things we're going to talk about. And we have a special guest today, a Christian astronomer. And so we're happy to have him, and we're going to introduce him in a few minutes. I would like to start out with a few scriptures. And in John chapter 14, verse 2, Jesus was telling his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So we do have a home in heaven, and he has a mansion for each one of us. But besides that beautiful heavenly home that we'll go to one day as a Christian, there's other things in this universe that God has made. And I have heard our Christian astronomers speak before and tell us all about it, and it is amazing, the universe that God has made. And then I'd like to read another scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. It says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So, we, you know, everything sometimes out there in space seems a mystery to us because we don't understand all. But this astronomer understands. Kevin understands much more than we do. And so I want you to listen up because we're going to interview him today. But then next week he's going to teach on the planet and, and all of the uh, beautiful universe that God has made for us. So, without any further delay... I would like to introduce Kevin Manning, and I want to read a little bit of his bio for you. He's a graduate of Oral Roberts University and was a Wright Fellow at Tufts University. He's a gifted astronomer, having worked as a consultant with NASA. The Chandra X-ray Observatory launched on the space shuttle with the Harvard-Smithsonian Harvard Center for Astrophysics and other ground-based observatories. Kevin won national and international awards in his field, was also an Einstein Fellow working on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. with the U.S. House of Representatives, and did some work with Brookhaven National Laboratory. You're going to have to tell us about all this. Besides the numerous workshops, he's presented over the years at libraries, observatories, science centers. Some noteworthy ones include those made at Tufts University, State University of New York at Stony Brook, the National Science Teachers Association, National Convention, the American Association for the Advancement of Science Breakfast with Scientists, and the National Park Service. Kevin served briefly as a missionary to China and has brought a message of faith and hope to churches across America. You sound like you're a very busy man, Kevin. To say the least. To say the least. Well, we welcome you here to the show. We thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me, Pastor Marlene. Thank you. Well, the first question we'd like to ask you is, how did you come to know the Lord, and how did he lead you into the area of astronomy? Well, I, I guess uh, if we go back when I was a young child, I was going to a Catholic church, and early on, I started suspecting that something wasn't in agreement with what I was thinking it should be. I felt like you shouldn't have to go through St. Bartholomew or another saint to reach God. Mm -hmm. I thought, why can't I just talk to God directly? Mm -hmm. And when I went into the confessional box to confess my sins for that week, and the, the uh, priest on the other side told me to say 10 Hail Marys and five Our Fathers, mm -hmm. I would go out and kneel on the pew and actually say those prayers. Mm -hmm. But while I was saying them, I stopped myself and I asked God, God, do you just want to hear these words? What does this all mean, repeating these words? I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So I sort of rebelled <laughs> in a way. Mm -hmm. And I stopped going to the Catholic Church. And when I was 
when I turned 17, we had moved down to Florida from New York, mm -hmm. which was a bit of a difficult time for me. You know, at age 17, most, most of us have a difficult time that year mm -hmm. of our lives. Yeah, and uh, I know I was struggling with a lot of things and the changes, and I had to leave all my friends behind in New York and mm -hmm. et cetera. So that was the year I gave my life to the Lord. And when I, when I you know, called out to the Lord, I felt a peace that I never felt before. And I literally, I know not everybody feels something and you don't have to feel something. Mm -hmm. But in my case, I did the first time. I, mm -hmm. When I called out to God, I felt like a million ton of bricks were lifted off my shoulders. Yes, and at age 17, that's a lot of bricks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just thank God that he took them from me immediately. I mm -hmm. felt it physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, every way you could feel it, mm -hmm. I felt it. Yeah. So I thank God that he heard wow. my prayer and I thought, boy, he's, he heard me. Kevin, yeah, you know, just yeah, little Kevin. Yeah. And uh, he answered my prayer. And um, so ever since I've given my life to Jesus, I've never been the same. Amen. Amen. And then I see in your bio, you went to Oral Roberts University. Yes. And is that where you got interested in the area of astronomy or? No, the astronomy interest actually began much earlier, age nine. A best friend of mine had a telescope he got for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he was kind enough to show me the craters on the moon and the rings of Saturn. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the rings of Saturn through his telescope, it just did something to me. And I thought, I, I want to go there. I want to <laughs> visit these other worlds. And so I, so I thought at that time, I want to be an astronaut. Wow. I have applied to be an astronaut. And as of lately, I'm still applying to be an astronaut. It's, I'm told it's not too late. So Fantastic. I'm going to continue applying, and uh, I'd wow. love that would be a childhood dream fulfilled. Wow. But uh, I did become an astronomer, mm -hmm. and you know, I between the studies of the universe and astronomy and learning theology at Oral Roberts University and studying the Bible on my own, mm -hmm. I can see that there is absolutely no discrepancy whatsoever between what science teaches us about the universe and what God says in his word. Mm -hmm. They all come Amen. together. Yes, yes, amen, amen. Well, what did you do while working at NASA and uh, did you see God's hand at work with well, all these scientists and researchers and yeah. so forth? I wasn't actually employed by NASA. I was a consultant for them, which means you're an independent contractor basically. Mm -hmm. So I worked on different projects. Mm -hmm. um, I remember some of them that, you know, years ago, you know, did some things with NASA and, and worked with NASA headquarters while I was in Washington, D.C. as an Einstein fellow. Mm -hmm. um, I also worked with the Centennial, the uh, Centennial Flight Commission, which was about the 100th anniversary of the Wright brothers and the first yeah. Yeah. men to fly in a plane. Mm -hmm. So it was celebrating that mm -hmm. on a national scale and I put together some units on that oh, wow. uh, for NASA. Uh -huh. um, NASA started something called Micro Observatory, which is these robotic telescopes set out in Arizona that you can access through your computer and request images of a galaxy, a nebula, a star cluster, a planet, what have you. And it will send you the raw data image to your computer email inbox. You can download free image processing software and process that image, much like professional astronomers do, mm -hmm. on your own computer and come up with a color or black and white image of that, of that galaxy. I wonder if everybody knows about that, that it's... Micro-observatory, NASA's micro-observatory. Okay. If you Google that, I'm sure you'll find it. Fantastic. Well, that's great. Now, when you worked with the people at NASA, did you find many Christians there? or believing that, you know, God did make all this. Yeah, I mean, it, it varied. It depended on where I was at the time and who I was working with. But at times I did run across other Christians mm -hmm. who believed in God and believed in Jesus and believed that God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and then quite often, probably more often, I'm sad to say, I ran into people who didn't believe in God at all. I worked with one of the greatest astrophysicists of our time mm -hmm. for a year, and 
been to his home and everything. He's a great man. Um, he's one of the most brilliant astrophysicists in the world, and he's world-renowned. And he doesn't believe in God, but he knows that I do. Mm -hmm. So he believes that we evolved out of a primordial soup of organic materials and came from single-celled, simple organisms to multicellular, complex organisms. I think it takes more faith to believe that than it does for me to believe that God created us in His image. He created the earth, He created the heavens, and He created everything. Amen, amen. I, I agree with you. It takes more faith to believe yeah. you came from an ape or a microorganism or rather than God is, yes. and He always was. Yeah. So um, another question, what is the Lord saying to you about the end times and what is happening with the planets? Because off and on I'll hear, you know, they'll say this is going to happen in the heavenlies mm -hmm. and so forth, but I'm not one to follow all that. Right. But I know since you do, you probably know what's happening here in these end times. Well, you may recall like I do, like back in the 80s, there were people claiming that if you went to this mountain, Jesus was coming and taking his people. Right. I didn't go to the mountain, <laughs> but I heard the message on the telephone that was give, given out right. to everybody who would call this number. And, and I thought, you know, Jesus himself said in the Word of God that I don't even know when I'm returning, but the Father knows. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus admits that he doesn't know, who am I to think that I could know, or anybody else for that matter? Right. Right. So I I'm o always have a red flag come up when anybody says Jesus is coming on this date, right. you know? Right. But we sort of know, because Jesus told us, you'll know by the seasons, but you know, that, that things are, are happening. And things are definitely happening today. We're, we believe we're possibly in the end times. You know, of course, that's been said over the last hundred or more years mm -hmm. by many people and well-meaning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to really just live, live your life for Jesus mm -hmm. and let God take care of that part of it. Amen. Just stay in tune with him, you know, stay close to him and, and uh, listen to his voice and be careful about listening to all the other voices out there yeah. because there are a lot of voices out there that are claiming doomsday predictions and mm -hmm. all kinds of uh, Holocaust type events mm -hmm. happening on the earth mm -hmm. due to astronomical phenomena mm -hmm. which you know I find most often they don't really understand the science of what they're claiming and the science actually disproves what their what their claims are mm -hmm. for example you know we had Y2K and we had 2012, Doomsday 2012. December 21st, we were supposed to be doomed. Right. <laughs> so several books were written from the mid-70s to the mid-90s and beyond about Doomsday 2012. Hollywood made a $200 million blockbuster hit movie that came out on Friday the 13th of all times. <laughs> that was, it was a great movie. I watched the movie. I thought it had great special effects. Uh -huh. But Hollywood's ominous slogan was, know the truth. Now, the problem is, it wasn't the truth. <laughs> and so I created a program to bring to the masses across the United States of America, Doomsday 2012, fact versus fantasy. So I gave the scientific facts that disproved all the claims that we were doomed on December 21st, 2012. Okay. And I remember an older woman came up to me and said, should I go Christmas shopping? <laughs> And I said, yes, dear, you, please don't worry. I promise you four days later, you will be able to give out those presents to your loved ones. Wow. And she did, because we're here, aren't we? We're still here. So. so did you get quite a bit of response from the people when you put that out? Across you know, when I gave those talks, sometimes I saw fear. You know, fear is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And I saw the spirit of fear in the eyes of some of my audience members. And as I was you know, dispelling those, those mysteries and those things that were creating that environment, I could see that, you know, some, someone were being delivered, because I'm praying under my breath too, Lord, deliver that person, you know, from the spirit of fear. And uh, there was no reason to be fearful. There was no reason whatsoever. And yet millions and millions of people were led to fear right. because of these authors right. that never sat down with the scientists to get their facts right. 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 It's really a criminal situation it in my mind. But yeah, anyhow. I would think so too. Yeah. I would think so too to put that spirit of fear yeah. in the hearts of the people. As far as the planets and the alignment of the planets, mm -hmm. when people say an alignment of the planets, especially like NASA, what, what we mean is that the planets can be all in the same sky. Mm -hmm. 
One could be setting in the west while another one's rising in the east. They're all within the same 180 degree hemispherical sky that we can see with our eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, that's not a direct line alignment like many right. people think in their right. minds. Right. It's not that at all. Uh, could two planets align with the Earth being a third body viewing the alignment of those two worlds? Yes, but it's so rare, mm. it won't happen in our lifetime, but it did happen in the 1800s oh, with Jupiter and Venus. Can it happen to three planets? Probably never. More than that, never, 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 never. Never since God created the heavens and the earth, wow. and I don't think it'll happen before Jesus it comes, happens. you know? So uh, this alignment of the planets is totally misunderstood. Mm -hmm. The gravitational influence of these worlds is nothing at all. It doesn't amount to a hill of beans as wow. far as who we are and influencing life on earth and what's going to happen to the world and stuff like that. Okay. So. so, and yet the people believe that. Yes. See, that's what, you know, we hear yes. over the TV or whatever yes. that, oh, they're lining up and this is yeah. going to happen. And, and a lot of people believe that we never walked on the moon, but 12 men actually did walk on the moon. I know some of those men because I want to be an astronaut, so I've met some of the astronauts, mm -hmm. and they, I asked them a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and they did walk on the moon. It really did happen. And then, you know, there's other myths out there that, you know, I could talk about. Planet Nibiru was supposed to collide with the Earth back in 2012. You know, a total of maybe five major events were supposed to do us in on December 21st, 2012. If we just use common sense on that, Think of it this way, if one catastrophic event destroyed life on the earth as we know it, mm -hmm. that would definitely be a bad hair day <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> but for two to happen the same day, right. you know, I mean, uh, one never has happened in the history of mankind, mm -hmm. and it, I don't see it happening in the near future. Mm -hmm. So for two to happen the same day is really far-fetched. Mm -hmm. For five to happen the same day is lunacy. Mm -hmm. So. You know, if we just use common sense, it's like, no, that, that can't happen. It can't be real. But the average person like myself mm -hmm. wouldn't, uh, I mean, five, I wouldn't believe. But when they say, you know, the Y2K, this is going to be the end and all that, yeah. I thought, well, if it is the end, I'm ready to see the Lord. Right. So I'm not fearful of it or right. storing up supplies and all this, you know. Yeah. And um, But for the person that's not a Christian, Fear can grip their heart because they're thinking, if this is the end, I'm not yeah. ready to meet my maker. And another question that we have for you, what would you say as you're talking to the listening audience about getting ready for the coming of the Lord and also the greatness of God at work in the universe? And that second part, whenever I heard you teach at the library and then also at another facility, and I didn't know anything about the planets, and I was absolutely amazed because when you look out into the universe and see how small our Earth is compared to many other planets, and then the one that is so far away, and I, I don't even remember the name, but you said it would take years before any satellite could reach it, maybe nine years or something, I'm not sure. Nine and a half years to Pluto. Yes, yeah. yes. And I was just amazed at the greatness of God and what all he has made out there that we don't even quite understand. But um, if you, as I said, the question, if you'd like to say to the listening audience about getting ready for the second coming of Jesus, okay. and also uh, just touch on the greatness of God at work in our universe. You know, as far as, uh, you know, preparing for the Lord's mm -hmm. return, I think it's important for all of us as, as children of God in the body of the Christ to start our day putting God first. You know, if, if we start our day by perhaps re-consecrating our life to the Lord. You know, when Jesus was walking in the Garden of Gethsemane, I think it was James and John who was with him, they fell asleep, their eyes became heavy. And Jesus went off to pray by himself and asked, Father, if this cup could pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Jesus consecrated himself. He said, okay, God, even though I'm feeling in my manness as a human being, 
I mean, my flesh is just panicking over this horrible fate that awaits for me on the cross. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I'm going to obey you and do your will. And I think we, as followers of Christ, need to sort of do the same kind of thing, to Amen. consecrate ourselves to the Lord and say, okay, Lord, I may not like hearing what you're telling me to do. Mm -hmm. I may be even afraid right. to do it, but I'm going to trust you. Right. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Right. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Amen. We need his direction. Amen. So we need the Lord to guide us and we need to invite him to do that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Lord, what do you have for me to do today? Absolutely. Lead me and guide me and not only tell me what you want me to do, but give me a heart that's both willing and obedient because that's what he said to the children of Israel. If you are willing and obedient, you shall see the good of the land, right? right? So uh, th that's two things. You can be obedient, but not willing and do it grudgingly. Right. Like, oh, okay, I'll do this, but right. I really don't want to. Right. Right. But if you're willing, you do it joyfully. Yeah. You do it because you really want to do it. So I ask God to give me that kind of heart to be willing and obedient to do his will. So I think that's what we all need to do as Amen. children of God in the body of Christ is, is realize that God is on the throne. He's in control. We have nothing to be fearful of, nothing to worry about, no matter what's going on in politics or the world the Lord, or the universe. Yeah. The Lord wrote the word. He is the word and his word will come to pass every bit of it. Amen. And so we could trust the Lord and know that he's with us every day of our lives, every moment. And he'll take care of us. And he'll too. take care of us. Yeah. So all these years that you've studied astronomy, what amazes you the most about what all mm. you've seen? You know, like you said earlier, uh, sometimes you can feel small. And when I give a program like size and scale of the universe mm -hmm. from the very small to the very large, a lot of people approach me and say, I feel so small. And I ask why? Mm -hmm. Because actually, mathematically, the human body, the size of our body is dead center. We have as many things smaller than us in the universe as we do larger than us. We're right smack in the middle. So he made us just He made us right, right in the middle. So that, that adds some significance. Mm -hmm. We're not all that small after mm -hmm. all, because we're huge compared to many other things, Thank as you. many things as there are bigger than us. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Shows the importance of man to God, doesn't it? Yes. God created us in his image, you know, you know, God is an awesome God. You know, the fact that he created the heavens and the earth, when I explore that, I'm just like a kid in a candy store. I just want to know more about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't presume to know all the answers. Nobody really does. Uh, when people try to put God in a box and say, no, he did it this way, not that way. I'm the first one to think, well, how can you do that? Because you know, however God did it is fine with me. I just want to find out what, what that method how was, you know, how he did yes. it. And the amazing thing when he held the mountains, the span of his hand, well, yes. how great is our yes. God? Yes. You know, the mountains in the span of his hands yes. measured the... Yes. Uh, when I read that, I think that yes. just overwhelms me, yes. the greatness of God. Yes. What an awesome God he yes. is. And what a great God to serve yes. him. And just like you said, ask the Lord, I may not want to do this, but I'm going to be willing and obedient. Right. He's our heavenly father. We're his children. Yeah. You know, just like an earthly mother and father want the best for their child, so does God for us. Right. So when he asks us to do something, it's for our own good. Right. Like he told the children of Israel when he gave the commandments. Right. I give you these commandments this day for your own good. A lot of people right. miss those four words in the Old Testament. But right. to me, that sums up right. what God was doing in the Old exactly. Testament for your own good. Right. He's always thinking about us. He yes. created us. Yes. He loves us. God is love. Yes. And he wouldn't ask us to do anything that would harm us. Amen. And he wants the best for us in every area of our lives. Yes. And he wants us to be a blessing here on the earth. Yes. And I know, Kevin, that you speak in schools and you mm -hmm. teach grades from when you're teaching about astronomy from what? From K to 12, but I also speak at universities. At universities as well. too. Yes. Fantastic. I bet they just love it when you come and, and have your. We all have fun. I enjoy I bet it too. You have yeah. Fun. Yes, yes. And even you can scale it down to the kindergarten and first grade. Yes. 
Yes. It's a challenge, but uh, yes, because there's, there's so much to the universe that is enjoyable mm -hmm. and fascinating, fascinating that even a young child can get excited about it and say, wow, that's really incredible. And maybe spark their interest to be an astronomer too one day, like yours at nine years old. I've had uh, crayon drawn, hand done cards from schools where I spoke mm -hmm. with a younger audience, like third graders, for example. And I, I'll never forget one of the cards, I still have it, says, because of you, I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. Wow. And I cried. Tears yeah. came down on my eyes. I just couldn't believe it. And uh, so you never know. You know, uh, what you do with the ministry here touches right. so many lives. Yes. You don't know. You don't always get the feedback. You don't get a card in the mail right. often. Cause, right. But people have these life-changing things happen to them as a result of the... They do. The faith ministries, they really you know. do. Yeah. And it's a privilege to be serving God, isn't it, in this yeah. day and age? It's a privilege that we are here on the earth, and God put us here at this time. Mm -hmm. And at time is such a time as this. And as we close, we thank Kevin for being on today. We just wanted to interview and have him talk about, about his life. And next week, he'll be teaching in the area of astronomy. So be sure and watch it because I think you're going to see some things that will amaze you and maybe some things that you didn't know. So I would like to close uh, with a scripture. The time just flies away, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It goes so, so fast. And um, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So what that's saying to us, you know, we are kings and priests here on the earth, and God has given us all talents and assignments, and God has a talent and assignment for you who are watching today. And just as we talk to Kevin, the Christian astronomer, he has a special place for you. And so I want you to open up your heart and whatever God has for you today, receive it. You know your situation, your problem, your job you're looking for, whatever situation, God wants to answer your prayers. And we serve a big God, he made the universe, and all you have to do is look at the stars and know he is out there. And you know what? You're important to him. And so God bless you for watching. We hope you tune in next week to hear Kevin Manning. And we'll see you again. God bless you and have a great day. To receive our free monthly newsletter and events, please call the church office at 724-387-1112. This message is available on CD or DVD for a donation of any amount. To request your copy of today's program, please write us at Voice of Faith Ministry, P.O. Box 245, Delmont, Pennsylvania, 15626.